Hello everyone, this is lecture number 7 from MIDAS GTS NX uh, software in the Azure Technical uh, Diploma. Uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, in, uh, like modeling uh, raft on pile and we will see how to update uh, last time uh, model uh, which we will include as a, a 3D excavation cut. Uh, and we will update it to in, uh, as uh, a residential building and we will add um, a raft and a pile to uh, simulate it as we have a whole building uh, in this uh, in this uh, lecture we will start with uh, from scratch to build our uh, raft model so we will start with a 3d uh, model and we'll say okay in order to install our problem, so we will go to uh, the workspace and we will modify it because we will draw on the plan X uh, uh, Y direction. So we will choose it like this and we will go to the grid here to define it as the width of the grid will be 1 meter and I want it to be 50 meters by 50 meters and I will say uh, let's make it 60 by 60 and I will say OK so it will be like this I will go to this plan and I will start to model my my raft as a square raft 20 meter by 20 meter so I will go here and I will modify this again to be 5 meter by f like this and I say cancel so if we measured here we will find that this will be 25 meter I want it to be 30 instead of 60 and I will say apply ok so this now will be 25 meter this is 100 no so this is not okay I will define this grid again as 1 meter and I say apply and now this will be like 30 meter now good I will go here to a rectangular and I will start, I have to make it make face and I choose here this will be one meter so if I choose this like this again from here to here and I will say cancel and I will come here and make face choose this and say apply so this will be our uh, our raft and here will be our uh, soil we're gonna make imprint or we don't even need to make imprint now we'll start to extrude our model so will go to extrude and I will extrude my soil in this direction for um, the depth of influence it will be like 2p so our p is 20 like the, the lower uh, dimension of the raft the lower dimension of the raft is 20 meters so 2 to 4b let's say 3b so we need 60 meters so we will have 60 and let, let's make it minus to be in minus z direction and as we can see here now we call it the ground and we say cancel we're gonna hide this and we're gonna go to extrude again we choose this face and we will make the raft to be with depth 1.5 meter and it will be an 
this direction and I say apply and now it's okay I will go here and show the solids I have two solids now now I have to do something important which is embedded because when we when we put this uh, when we put this uh, pile uh, when this put this raft in this uh, soil uh, we found out that the soil here like the pile will be embedded in the uh, soil so to do this we have to go to solid and in embedded part we choose this and to choose the tool will be the other solid and we say apply cancel so as we can see now this is our raft uh, here now we will go here and show the surface again and I will translate this I will translate face in this direction Z direction and I will make it copy non-uniform at 3 meters or let's say minus 3 and minus uh, minus uh, <coughs> and minus 15 and say apply then we will go to divide here divide part and we'll choose our soil and we choose our tool to be our surface and we say apply now we divided our solid into three pieces which represent our soil first time we will start to model, model this raft as raft without pile to see the effect uh, of load in this file in this raft so we will go here and we will make auto connect we will choose boolean and we choose everything and we say apply and close now we go to material and properties we will get our properties from the last uh, model we need this one we need this one and we need those three layers and we say okay okay close we will see that if we brought this material now uh, this property the material will come as well we'll go to 3d but before this we have to define another material isotropic to define the raft and we call it concrete and we will give it modulus velocity 2.1 e8 or e7 concrete and reinforced concrete the gamma will be 25 and the borus here will be 25 as well and this is thermal and we're gonna say apply now we will go to properties and we will create 3d concrete and we'll call it raft and we'll say apply close and close now after we did this we'll go to 3d and we'll start to mesh our uh, raft with size one meter and hybrid and it doesn't matter which soil we are gonna say apply
then we will mesh the rest of the problem to 3 meters and we say apply as we can see here because we did auto connect so all the shear faces are the same so we will come here now and we'll go to parameter to assign 3d very important to choose 3d and we will choose this layer and we'll assign it to per uh, layer and we say apply this layer and we'll assign it to this layer and we'll say apply last layer we'll assign it to the third one and we say apply after after this we will go to static and we define the constraints and we make it auto and we say apply and the self weight will be gravity and we say apply then we have to do another important thing this raft we defined it as a soil but first thing we will excavate this part and we will change the properties of this soil into another material to be concrete so at the beginning this is a soil in or this is the, the section of the, uh, the ground then we will start to ex uh, excavate and then we will start to install or implement our soil we have to save our model in lecture 7 And we say save now after we did this we have to, as we said we have to change the property of this raft from the soil to the to the to concrete we do this from change properties we will start to go here and choose the layer of the raft and we change it to raft and we call it raft so we're changing the property from soil to concrete here we'll start to change the name to raft buried layer this is weathering soil and this one will be Colivium. So now we already understood what it means to uh, add, like to change the property, and we this is something new we already learned it today. So this is very important to be considered. We will hide any boundary condition. We will hide all the geometry and we will show this here to we'll start to add the loads our loads will be concentrated and we will add it in z direction and it will be minus 1000 and we call it uh, life load so we will start to add it at node so I will start to add one here and one here and one here then one here and one here and one will be here here So this is the loot on the raft, it will be like this,
so this is how will be our loot like this and we say apply close so this is our loot here and this will be our model like this we'll go to analysis and we add our construction stages here and at the beginning we will add the buried and all the soil and we will add this boundary condition the general one and then the gravity loot and we'll say save clear the displacement and we call this initial boundary condition save the new we call this raft at this stage we start to add the boundary condition of the raft and we say save the new loading and we start to add this load we will learn new thing today is how to add the load at stages if we went to non-linearity here and I will tell him like increase this load on 20 step and give me all the steps so he will add the 1000 uh, kilonewton at 20 step it means 50 kilonewton at each step and I will say OK, save, close, close. So it's very important in finite element not to add all the load one time, as a, uh, 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 because there will be like um, numerical problems. So we have to add the load in steps. After this, we'll go to analysis here and we'll start to add it as construction stages, and the title will be run one. And the same here, we will get our initial stage from initial condition and we will apply k node condition. OK, apply, and we'll start to run our model. As we can see here, he start to add this on steps. So if we have 100 uh, stay, if 100 percent, each stage will be 5 percent. And I will leave the model to finish. Then we will discuss the results. Now, as we can see, the model is done and. Um, as a total warning is zero so I don't have any problem with our mo with my model I will just here look at this uh, results and to s and we will compare it after we add the file we will check the total displacement here and undeformed and we will go here so we will check the maximum and the minimum so the maximum displacement here will be around 13 millimeter i can do the iso surface i will cut this one at the middle and i will add and i choose in y direction Add. So I will always uh, remove. I don't want to see the edge and say close. So this is our model, and we can see that the effect of the load here. There are some stuff we need to look at. First thing, this is the bulb from the. Uh, from the stresses if we are loading here if you still remember from our undergraduate school we studied how to uh, how to do the stress distribution if we have like a point load or line load or square load rectangular load circular load and so on and we knew that there will be like a pulp or like a size for the stress effect so we can see here that the effect of the stress 
uh, beside the raft can goes up to like if we take a measurement from here from this point to this point this is around um, uh, 14.5 uh, meter and in this direction it's like like the depth is 31 meter around 1.5 the uh, the size of the raft and the max as we can see that if we take prop here we will see that the stresses is like the displacement decreases by depth until it reach almost zero here this is important thing is that you should see when you look at your model now if we looked at the stresses so this is the stress distribution and we can look at von Mises stress and we can look at, at stresses here and if I looked here I can find that the maximum stress here is 2000 uh, 2034 kilonewton uh, per meter square and this is in the concrete so we have to check the raft uh, the concrete in the raft to be at this kind of stress so when we design design our concrete uh, concrete and the stresses inside it should be less than this I will show you in when uh, when like uh, compare this with the raft or we can do this again how we can measure the the moment and uh, the, the straining action in uh, in the raft but now we will check if we did a cutting diagram like this here this is the workspace uh, xz So we can see this is the stress, but this is at zero. We have to check if this is correct or not. We can make it from minus 10, from minus 10, and 0 for y, and minus 1.5 to ten and he should show it to me like this so this is the place of the raft and I say show it in y direction and we say apply so or we make it like 50 and we say apply close so this is the shape of the stresses beneath beneath the raft and the maximum stress beneath the raft it's 297 almost 300 so when we check the bearing capacity we can average this and if we edit interface beneath the raft it this will be more uniform or we can take like the average value around uh, 100 and this should be the bearing capacity of the soil should be larger than this value so this is one of the method uh, the, in, like you can control like or you can judge the bearing capacity mm. so now we already find the displacement we talk about the stresses and here like you can check the stresses and we can go back here to total to the total displacement in all cases and we can see that by increasing the load the displacement increase I want to do one last thing here which is I want to add uh, an element like to gauge 
like now I'm choosing this again I want to add an element on the raft here to tell me the straining action like the moment uh, uh, when I add the load so I will go to geometry to mesh here and I go to properties and I will go here and create other there is something here called gauging shell so sorry it's not here it's in uh, create element create I go to other here and here I create something called gauging shell and he will ask me to choose or to select solid and then face so we do this through the geometry so I will choose this and I select the solid I select the face and I choose the material here like or I create this material now I had to create it here but I couldn't so I can create it as well from here and I say gauging shell and I say ok and I say apply and close if I logged here I will find there is another material here has been added which will be used to create this I will go now to result uh, to analysis and construction and when I add the raft I add something else called gauging shell and say save close and I run my model again we can see here now we are adding the raft solving the step of the raft he passed it now he solving the loading part now we will look at just the shell element here and we will look at the moment in x and y direction if I looked here and I don't want to see anything except the gauging shell I will like hide those I don't want to see any uh, I don't want to see this and I just want to see the gauging shell and I will do a cutting diagram from this point to this point I will increase it to 40 and please show me the results in Y direction and apply so we can see the maximum moment here is uh, 400 kN meter per meter run we can add another diagram here in this direction but now show it in x direction and we say apply close and it's almost 338 so if I add it if I show it now so now you can design your uh, raft and as we can see here the distribution of the moment makes sense and y direction so we can see it's reversed and this is almost 400 and the other one is almost uh, 300 so we can see uh, the distribution of the moment and we can design our um, raft according to uh, according to this so in this uh, now we will start to create our uh, raft on bile and we will see the difference if when we encode bile and uh, the difference in the displacement and the difference in the stresses and the difference in the distribution of string action like moments in the raft so we will st start to do this now 
Now we will start to add the uh, bias to compare the results between the two models. I will start to save as uh, this model. And I will start to draw the piles. So I will go here. I will just delete these layers. I will just show the raft and I will add a pile. Since the depth until the second layer is 18 meters, I will add pile with uh, with the depth of 16.5 and and the raft is 1.5 meters. So I will start from here will be 3D line for, from here and I will add 0 and 0 and minus 16.5 so this will be our first pile and I will just delete this one and I will show this dimension so I will go to try to show our geometry here and from the geometry I will show the raft as we can see here we'll go to translation and we we'll choose our line and I will choose the direction to be x direction and I will copy at each 4 meters and I will do this 4 times so as we can see it work so then I will start to choose the 4 piles and I will start to copy them 4 meters 4 times and I will choose the direction to be the x direction but it will be as a the positive one as we can see it's correct so this is our pile system it's important to do some imprinting here so first thing we'll go to imprint and I will choose curves I choose this face then I will choose the selection to intersect so I choose all the bile and I choose the shortest direction and I say apply then I will hide the raft and I will show the other one so I'm hiding the raft now and I'm choosing the uh, target, this face and this face and I'm selecting the tools to be as we know this, that, uh, the whole piles and I choose the shortest direction and I say apply the last thing is to choose uh, uh, this layer and to hide this one and this one so we choose this layer and this layer and we select the tools to be these curves and I say shortest path and I say apply so this will be our file and last thing will be the soil this face curves will be those curves short dust direction and I say apply and it's done now I imprint it so all the nodes will be connected together and I choose everything now and I say auto connect so auto connect boolean so it share all the faces and I say apply and now it's done then I will start to go to mesh and material I will keep concrete but I will start to define a bile section it will be 1D and I will choose it to be an element so it's gonna be uh, piles
and I'm gonna choose a section here to be pipe or solid round to be 60 centimeters and I say OK and I say apply close I will talk about the interface for the while in another lecture but for now we will just start to mesh so we go to 3d mesh and we'll start to choose the raft and we'll call it raft and it doesn't matter we will choose this later to modify the material we'll choose the uh, dimension to be one meter and the mesh type to be hybrid and we say apply then we'll start to choose all other layers and we make the dimension to be 3 meters and we say apply so we'll start to mesh our problem as we can see and we have to make sure that all nodes are connected together here we will go to parameter and element and we choose 3d we choose the top layer and we will assign it to be the top layer second layer to be cumulative and we say apply and last layer to be wizard and we say or wizarding soil and we say apply we show this by mat by material or by property and we see it's different color now we will go here and we will delete those and we will delete this one and do we have the gravity yes we do have the gravity fluid so we will go here to uh, we still have we still have uh, uh, the piles so we got we're going to choose 1d and we are going to choose all the piles here and size will be one meter and we'll call it pile and the property will be pile and we say apply after this we will go to here and show everything so this is the raft fine this is the uh, parrot layer and this is the uh, weathering soil and this is the collegium soil now now we have to understand that we uh, we can define this as embedded beam instead of beam if we created it as embedded beam at this time he will understand that uh, this pile material is uh, is this pile is embedded in this uh, soil so we we'll go to embedded beam and we will just create another one here round and we say 0.6 meter and we say okay and we'll call it by embedded and we say OK and we say close close so when we choose the pile here we we choose we go here to parameter uh, parameter and we choose 1d so we are going to choose our piles and we can modify it to pile embedded and we say apply close so it's pile embedded here so if we went back here and we delete this it will be deleted so this is for the pile now we will go to static analysis and we start to add our constraints to be auto and cancel and we start to change our material properties so we will choose our raft and we change it to raft and we will call it to be concrete we call it raft 
and we say apply and cancel then after this I will just hide the boundary condition and the loot and I will go back here to hide everything and I will just show the raft at the top side and I will start to add the loot here and here and here here I don't remember so just let's see here where we added our root so I will show the static loots here as we can see like this here and here and here As we can see, these are our loops. We add it in Z direction to be minus 1000 and it will be life load and we say uh, OK. So as we can see here, this is our loot. Then after this, now I will go here to uh, stages and I will go to the initial stage I will add this layer this layer and the raft and the weathering soil this boundary condition and the gravity and this is for initial then I will start to change it uh, I will start to change it to raft and I install the files then I will start and the last one I will start to load it and we say save and close don't forget to add the gauging shell so I will come here you can start to create gauging shell but we can just create it here and we call it gauging shell and we will come here and show the geometry and it's very important to show the geometry here and we will hide the mesh we'll go here to the mesh side and we'll go to element and we will create other then we will start to choose gauging shell and we choose this solid and the space and we call it gauging shell and we say apply cancel and now we have our gauging shell we will go back here to the raft and we will start to add uh, our gauging shell here and we say save and in the last loading we are adding the life load and we say close so this to be our problem we will start to show our geometry here and we will hide all the solids as you can see so this will be our model and we will start 
to run it. So this is the stage of initial has passed. Now we are in the raft and it's done and we already added this is the loading part and he increasing it as we, as we remember it was 20 stages and take it step by step increasing the load Fifty percent, thirty-five. I'm just going to pause the video until it's done. Now, after the run it has been done, we can see that uh, total warning is zero. Our model is good, so we we'll go now to the result uh, and we will start to see the displacement. So the total displacement now. As we can see, let's show it in millimeter. So we can see here that we can take all these diagrams and we can say auto connect, uh, auto grid. So we can see here the minimum and the maximum. So we can see here now that the displacement is 7 mm and let's see compare this with other with the other model as uh, total displacement here is as we can see here millimeter and we can show all the problem show me the minimum and the maximum so the maximum is 13 millimeter but when we added the pile it was just 7 millimeter there is something we, did, we didn't add here which is the boundary conditions for the pile which is the rotation and uh, the rotation and like we're constrain the rotation in the direction but it's fine we already know this but just note you have to add the constraint for the uh, rotation let's now see the rest of the results like we can see here you can see here uh, results in uh, the other direction go to grade so we can see here if we went to clipping so and we add this and we choose this direction we reverse and we add this too close this and we show all these grids and close so this is the shape of the pulp as we can see here and we can see the deformation part uh, on deform it or deform it we can see it as undeform it we can see the effect of the loot as we can see the improvement and we can see as well here the stresses in the solid Sigma SS and we can see here if we come here to this diagram now we can see the stress distribution beneath the uh, beneath the raft we can see it's down and up it would be here up at the points of the pile and down where the pile is not exist and uh, we can look now at the uh, uh, shell like I can show all the geometry 
and I can now disappear all of this. I will show the gauging shell and I will show the moment now. So we can see now the moment as we can see the distribution. In y y direction so let's see the diagram here and here as we can see the moment is rotation like flipping like reversing at uh, the bio uh, position so this is a wild position this is a wild position as we can see and the maximum moment here is now it's uh, 120 and here it's 168 here is 174 let's see in our other model the maximum moment in the gauging shell in y direction i'm showing here these two diagrams and we can see this is uh, almost 400 so this is the effect of the vial. It increases the, the moment because it distributed between up and down in both directions. So we can get a lower thickness for the raft. Let's see the moment in the other direction. We can see that, yeah, it is the same moment. So this is the, uh, this is the result of the moment and we can just design our raft now according to this result here we can go and uh, and just show the pile and since our pile is a pin element we will go here and we will start to show our pin forces So we will show the moment around y y direction as we can see since it's just axial force the moment is pretty small it will be zero in this direction and now it's not zero in z direction because we didn't restrict the rotation but it's fine that's why we have to restrict the relation in z direction so we sh show the shear here so the minimum and the maximum value as for shear is 17170 uh, uh, we can show the axial force in the bile uh, and uh, the maximum force here is 465 uh, kN so this is the, uh, the bearing capacity of the bile should be in this range and you can see the development of the value here according to the increase of the load so this is uh, this, uh, like this show us the difference in the results between if we have one bile if we have uh, just a raft and we have a raft on bile and the difference between both in displacement and uh, the distribution of the moment and this is really important when we design our problems uh, to optimize it to be uh, more economic and cheap So, uh, for the part of uh, the, uh, like simulating uh, like the raft on uh, uh, on soil or the raft on bile, we will end this here and we will start to go back to the three D model we created last time to uh, add uh, a, a raft and bile to the problem to see the effect uh, of uh, bile and the excavation and how we can solve the whole problem. Uh, like uh, imagining uh, that we have uh, an excavation and we will start to create our model we will go to this model now and we'll talk more about this now we are back to this model we are going to save it and we are going to save it here again uh, save we are going to call it 
compressed and we are going to do some modifications here imagine we are going to build a, a block here and this block will like and this uh, this block uh, will require some uh, will require some uh, excavation for uh, basement and then we will have to make a raft and this raft will be on uh, pile so first thing since there will be work inside here the top two level of struts will, will be okay so we will have to use uh, anchors for the four levels so we will do some modification here and we will start to run our model to see what we can do we will come here and we will start to see our first thing we will start to delete this is interface we will delete it so we are going now or we are going first to uh, delete this layer of meshing the this one and this one too and this one so we are going to leave this layer we are going to delete the rigid link and the interface and we will come here and we will delete this parameter and we will delete this material now uh, we it will be hard to when we work in the inside to find the uh, if we took this excavation off like it's gonna be hard to work in the inside the inside here uh, using this kind of struts so that's why we will like uh, replace them with this kind of anchor so we'll come here and we can create first thing we can delete this strut I don't want any struts inside and I will keep I don't want this piles as well so all I'm gonna all what I'm going to do is in the mesh part I will copy mesh so here I will go to copy or translate so I will copy mesh set I will make a copy this copy will be two meters twice in the y direction uh, twice in the y direction uh, sorry in the z direction and this are the object mesh set I will just copy the anchor 3 and we can see now this will be the two level I say apply cancel now we already copy this one and we're gonna rename it as anchor uh, anchor stage 3 anchor and we'll call this a stage for a stage one anchor this one is a stage two sorry this is stage two so now we have four stage of anchor here as we can see we are just going to check here in the static 
part to show this so we will come here and we will start to go to static and we will go to priestess and we will choose this element but we choose intersect this one and choose this one and here choose this one and they choose this one so this is all the parts we need to choose we will make it tension only and we will add it to be 20 and we will say this is anchor stage 2 tension and we say apply then we come here again and we choose this and this and in this direction we choose this one and this one and we say this is gonna be stage one and we say cancel so those are the four stages of anchor we will have we save our model here as we can see we will go to the boundary condition and we don't need this anymore or we can just keep it for the pile we will add here we just delete this one and after this we will go to the meshing here and we will start to mesh this part again in 3D and we will make the mesh size to be 3 meters hybrid mesh and it doesn't matter the soil we will say apply cancel cancel so here there is a problem so I will just delete this and as we can see this is a problem now and we will delete this we failed at this layer so I will show here everything and I will come here first and I will say auto connect for everything and I say apply so he will auto connect everything and I will try to mesh it again now at 3 meters hybrid and apply there is no problem now but the machine are not connected together so I will just come back here again and delete this and delete this and delete this one and I will delete Or we can just come here first and we can say merge everything find apply yeah because we already deleted the interface so there is a problem here so I'm going to show here the geometry and I will say auto connect again everything and I will say apply auto connect again everything and I will say apply cancel choose those three and we can mesh them at three meters hybrid and 
apply we still have a problem it means that we need to remesh this again we will try to do this meshing one last time so we are choosing this three meters hybrid and apply so that means that we will have to do the meshing again no problem we can finalize this so easily so we have to delete this this is the first one second third fourth and this is the sheet file so we'll just hide this we don't need even this way link so we will start with meshing everything come here auto connect one last time we'll select everything we say apply so all shared faces are okay hide and hide and hide we hide those so we choose meshing 3d we choose everything size will be one meter hybrid and apply so we we'll start to mesh our problem then we will mesh those three to three meters hybrid and we say apply you can see that machines are okay right now they are already catching each other which is fine we come here and we start to go to parameter we choose the top layer Three D, sorry. Choose the top layer. Then the other one. Then the final layer. We say apply. So after this, we come here. So this is the bird layer and this is weathering soil and this is collegium soil and we we'll hide the whole geometry So this is So we are going to merge those together and they will be stage one excavation and
and then we'll merge those and this is stage 2 Stage three, excavation. And this will be Stage four excavation, and finally, this is would be the thickness of the raft, but it will be excavated first, and like embedded depths. And finally, we will come here now and we create our sheet pile from extract. So, full fast, we come here and we create our from, from geometry. So, we come here, we show our geometry, and we ask this to be height and hide and so we go to extract from this side no from face so we choose And we choose sheet pile and we call it sheet pile. So we created now our sheet pile. Uh, we already assigned our parameters, so we'll go to interface very fast. So from interface, from plane, shell, as we remember and we choose our sheet pile as our element and from both sides and we will merge the nodes of course we remember all of this we come here we choose this and wizard will take it as 0 0.6 okay and create rigid link and we call it by interface and we apply now he created all our interface and rigid link as we can see here last thing we will do is extracting 1d for the wheeling so we will hide everything And we will come here and we will go to extract again, but this time we'll extract edge. So we are choosing this node 
extract from mesh on the element we are choosing this node and we are choosing this element and it will be whaling and we will say this whaling stage one or stage one whaling we say apply stage two stage three stage four and now we already have all our element we go to analysis and we go here and show everything and now we're creating our boundary condition constraints from O2 ground boundary condition apply cancel after this we go to display everything and we just uh, to the height everything and just display the raft and we go to change properties and it doesn't have a property so we go here and we create uh, 3D properties and structure material 1 or 2 they are all steel so we go to here and create one isotropic material elastic concrete 2.1 is 7 25 and porous is 25 and we call it concrete for the pile as well and we say apply cancel close and we call this one concrete and we call it raft and we say apply cancel close and choose raft for this object and we say raft and we say apply and close now we already created our raft here so last thing we will do is to add the pile element so we will come here and line and create line so you either can add the uh, pile element here and this is uh, well uh, this is the weathering soil just beneath it so you can choose the size or the length sorry of the pile to be for example six meter so here we'll just hide the boundary condition and we'll come here and we create file element with six meters translate we make it copy this one and from this point to this point and we calculate it and we say two times and we say apply so this is our files then we do this copy from here to here and and we do this 
five times as we can see now two meters in this direction and eight so we say apply cancel so this is our file now we go to mesh and we create a property 1d embedded beam and the file will be round solid 0.6 meter okay and we call it files and we just come here and say cancel we come here and we go to 1d meshing we choose this and we say file and we create file and we say enter and that's it now we go to analysis and in analysis last thing we will do here in the boundary condition we will go to boundary condition and we choose from advanced RZ and this time it will be constrained rotation we will choose here we will hide the raft and we we'll choose the files and we say apply now we show everything we go back here and we go back to construction stages for the initial part we start to add the buried and all the soil we add the rigid link state anchor not now excavation excavation and the weathering soil we add ground boundary conditions this is correct so in the next stage we adding the first stage of whaling we adding the first stage of uh, we take the first stage of excavation deactivate this and we add the first stage of wheeling and first stage of anchor and first stage from the load save then deactivate this one activate this one activate this one and activate this one then I deactivate this one activate activate then installing wheeling stage one excavation stage two stage three stage four now final excavation which is the raft and we will add we are not gonna excavate it we're gonna call it raft now but we are going to change its material save but we're gonna add the pile and here we will take from stage 2 this constraints raft will add piles and we will add constraint rotation and the raft here in stage 2 we install the sheet pile so where is the sheet 
point here. Sheet file. And we activate the deactivate the rigid link and we activate the interface so stage one here This is gonna be stage one and whaling one and anchor one save. This is stage two. Save. This is a stage three last one is stage four and finally the raft and the piles and the constraint rotation Then we say close. We can add loads here to the raft. So we take off everything. We show the raft here. We choose force and we can add forces here. minus 500 and we can call it life loot we can add another line here of looting we say apply cancel it will be like this, we go here to another stage, new, and we call it live loot, and we just add the loading, and save and close. We can start to simulate this by showing everything. So we installed the sheet pile and we take off the rigid link and we edit the interface. We took off the first excavation, second excavation, third, fourth, and raft and boundary condition, and loading. We come here again with just one more check. Here, anchor one, save. Stage two, two, three, 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 four, four, raft, and close. We say save. And we just come here and edit. We'll make the life loop to be solved in 10 steps. And we say, OK, save, close, and run. 
this is a very large problem and it will take some time to be solved so I will just pause the video until it's done after finishing the solution of the model we just can run like you just can review the results as we reviewed them before either in the uh, this model or uh, the raft model and this is a simulation for a big problem and it requires a lot of knowledge and we learned a lot of techniques uh, and and after after this like uh, you can understand how you can model uh, a building uh, with excavation and it's supported and you can show every part of it uh, uh, as we can see in this model uh, I will end this lecture at this point and next lecture we'll start to talk about uh, a new topic uh, see you next lecture thank you so much